What's going on guys, Ed here. I'm back from a little trip to Mexico where the gains did suffer, you know, I was living off booze and freaking quesadillas and shit, but I'm back. I'm ready to get started with our fourth SARM in the series. Today we're talking about Rad 140. We're going to get into it, give you the breakdown, what it is, how it works, uh, what are the benefits we can expect for bodybuilding purposes, any side effects. And then what to look at as far as dosage, timing, cycle length, and any studies that we can find on it. So, with that, let's get to it. Rad 140. Um, hopefully you know, if you don't know, um, it is a SARM. It's a selective androgen receptor modulator. That's what this whole video is about, alright? It's what uh, this series is leading up to. We got a bunch of SARMs we're reviewing here. Um... If you don't know, SARMs, they bind to androgen receptors in a similar way that testosterone and its derivatives, aka other steroids would, but they do so in a more tissue selective fashion. Um, they bind specifically to muscle and bone tissues without affecting a lot of the other organs in your body like steroids do, which is great. Um, RAD140 was developed similar to other SARMs for muscle wasting, bone density diseases, stuff like that. Um, but RAD140 is kind of a newer one. The first human studies for RAD140 were only done in 2017, so it hasn't been around that long. Um, there's been a couple studies in rats, monkeys, we're going to look at later. But this is kind of a newer compound on the scene. Um, it has a high AR affinity, a high affinity for the androgen receptor. Um, and pretty good bioavailability, so this stuff is going to be very effective, meaning you can take it orally um, and your body's going to absorb it quite well and it's going to utilize it quite well because it's going to bind to your androgen receptors with a very high affinity compared to other compounds would. Uh, this is a pretty heavy duty guy, this isn't no like shit around walk in the park like eh, try this your first time, like this is uh, one of the more suppressive SARMs, so this is a big boy uh, this is known as one of the strongest SARMs out there, so be careful with this stuff. Don't just jump into it blindly. Make sure you do your research before trying it. That's why I'm here to help. Um, as always, don't take this stuff because it's not legal and it's not meant for human consumption as a research chemical. So if you're going to do some research, eh, go ahead. Go do that, but uh, don't take it. Um, but if you were to do research, you could take it orally in a dropper form. <laughs> um, yeah, so it can be used, I guess, for bulking if you want, but not really. This is going to be more of like a, a leaner, drier kind of. So I would use this for like cutting and recom cycles. If you want to bulk on it, you can. You're not going to gain a whole lot of fat, which is going to be great. Um, so, hey, why not? Do it for bulking too. Um, this is going to offer some good size, some good strength. Um... Yeah, Rad 140, as far as strength, a lot of people rant and rave about the strength uh, increases that you get with this stuff. It's going to increase your lean body mass. Uh, it might even reduce your body fat while you're gaining weight. Probably will, actually. Most people report actually a loss in body fat while they are gaining weight, which is interesting. Usually, when you gain weight, you're going to gain muscle, but maybe a little bit of fat, too, but... You'll probably actually lose fat taking Rad 140. Like I said, it's a very dry compound, so you don't have to worry about a whole lot of water retention. You're going to get that hard, grainy look. Um, I don't know, you ever seen like bodybuilders on stage where you just see the veins and the striations and the cuts, and it's just like grainy looking, like, like high def. You're like, wow, like... That's kind of more of like the Rad 140 look you're going to get. You're not going to swell up a real big balloon like you would on like uh, like DECA or something like that. Or D-Ball or, you know. Um, so, yeah. It's going to improve your vascularity, um, you know, your, your leanness, all that good stuff. Uh, this is going to help with recovery, uh, endurance. And it's not actually too bad on your liver. As always, any time you're taking an oral compound, you got to watch your liver. But uh, I looked through a bunch of studies and it actually turns out that it's not as bad as people expect on your liver. But that being said, still take care of your liver. All right. Don't be boozing and just dicking cases of beer while you're 
doing huge amounts of Rad 140. Don't do that because you're going to screw it up. So with this one, guys, you can expect some pretty good muscle gains. You're going to expect some good size, some good strength. A lot of the positives of steroids without a lot of the negatives of steroids. You're going to avoid a lot of those androgenic side effects. I'm talking about the hair falling out, the prostate issues, the acne, the gyno, the shrinking balls. You're not going to get a lot of that stuff with RAD 140 because of how selective it is uh, strictly to muscle and bone tissue. So with that, let's get into some side effects we can expect. Um, probably some mild suppression. Uh, as I said, this is one of the heavier duty SARMs. Uh, so you will get some suppression. It's going to be dose dependent. You know, if you're taking five milligrams a day of this stuff, probably not that much suppression. If you're taking 25, 30, then probably a lot more suppression. It's going to depend on how much you take for how long. Ultimately, blood work's going to decide how suppressed you are. You're not really going to know. Um, mild liver toxicity, you know, it's an oral compound. Um, as always with SARM steroids, you got to keep an eye on your cholesterol, your blood pressure, make sure you're getting it checked um, because this stuff probably will affect it. Everybody's different, but yeah, just keep that stuff in check. Be smart, be proactive about it. Um, another side effect, one that I got and I noticed when I took Rad 140 was dry joints. This is kind of why I did not like Rad 140 a whole lot. Just it made my joints feel like stiff and like dry and achy, like real achy joints. So I didn't like it. Um, I guess because it is not very, uh, you know, water retentive compound. So it's very dry and it's going to dry you out, which some people like, but I just, I just felt achy and stiff and I didn't like it. Um, so there's my thoughts on it. I mean, as far as this versus like LGD say, I liked, I favored LGD more. I just thought that the the strength, the size gains with LGD are very comparable. Like you're not going to notice a whole different, uh, you know, this one's way better than this one. Like they're going to be pretty similar. You're going to gain size on both of them. You're going to look more vascular on both of them. Rad 140, you might get a little bit drier of a look where LGD, you're a little bulkier looking which you know might not actually be a bad thing you're gonna look bigger uh but you're gonna feel better too your joints aren't gonna be all stiff on lgd so if it was my decision i would choose lgd over rad 140 but that, that's just me everyone's different um dosage timing cycle length what are we looking at uh six to twelve weeks Typical for a SARM cycle. Seems like 8 to 10, though, is always that sweet spot. I would always say start shorter your first time, maybe 8 weeks. Cap it at that. Try it out. Um, as far as dosage, it seems like 5 to 30 milligrams per day is average. 5 on the lower end, 30 on the high end. I think 10 to 15 might be like that little sweet spot area, um, especially if it's your first time trying this stuff out. It has a half-life. Um, new data is actually showing a half-life of around 60 hours, where typically with like SARMs and stuff like this, you'll see like a 24 to 36 hour half-life. Well, Rad 140, I guess, um, after some further studies and human tests, they're finding it's got a longer half-life than they initially thought, which, you know, you just take that into consideration when... You wanted to see how often you should dose it, uh, when to start your PCT, all stuff like that. But um, with this, you can dose it once per day. There's no real need to kind of split it up because it is a longer half-life. Um, but when you go to PCT, uh, you got to take the half-life into account. We're not going to go deep, deep into that. Um, there's a lot of alternating views on when to start your PCT, how many half-lives you should wait uh, before you start. Um, if you even need one for RAD 140, if you're doing a quick little eight-week cycle, five milligrams a day, you might not even need one. It probably will suppress you a little bit, but like, you know, say you're going to do a 12-week cycle with 25 milligrams. Yeah, you're going to need a PCT. So it's going to vary depending on your cycle. There's no set in stone PCT. Safer to have one on hand and, you know, maybe go to the store, get a generic supplement shop PCT. Maybe have some Clomid Nova, Clomid Nova on hand. 
um, just in case. But ultimately, the only way you're going to know if you need it or not is by getting your blood work done, get your blood checked, see where your levels are at. Um, I did try Rad 140 only once, and it was for about a 10-week cycle. It was either 12 or 15 milligrams per day. I forget. I think it was dosed. I think I took a pill form of it, but they have it in pill or dropper form. I would recommend the dropper form. Um, it's just more legit that way. Uh, the concentration is probably a lot more accurate. Um, but I did notice increases in, you know, like muscle mass, vascularity, uh, better pumps in the gym, strength. But like I said, I just didn't feel great on it. And mostly because of like the the joint problems I was getting and it just didn't feel good. So I didn't really like it a whole lot. Let's check out some studies. So there have been a few studies done on RAD 140, uh, specifically monkeys and rats is what they do a lot of their testing on. And in rats and monkeys, it is shown to increase muscle mass, lean body mass, and many times you're getting large increases in muscle mass but very small increases in fat and sometimes cases where you have less body fat than before. So your weight will go up, your muscle tissue mass will go up, but your, the amount of body fat on your body will actually go down in some cases, which is interesting. Um, Rad 140, like I said, is a very, very like dry cutting like get ripped get shredded up compound so it's gonna shred fat it's gonna shred fat while building muscle um it also is gonna have minimal effects on your prostate and a seminal vesicle weight meaning that when you take steroids a lot of times your prostate will become enlarged uh, your balls will shrink up but because rad 140 is more selective in the tissues that it's binding to you're going to have to take crazy, crazy high doses before you get into the to the point of having prostate enlargement or seminal vesicle uh, decreased size. Your, your balls aren't going to shrink from taking Rad 140 uh, is what I'm saying. So there's that. Um, you know, that's just my little uh, spiel, a little quick overview on Rad 140. Um, it wasn't necessarily my favorite compound. It did work. Um, but there was others, you know, I would favor ahead of it. For example, LGD, um, you know, whatnot. But yeah, everybody's different. Some people, they swear by rad. They're only going to use that, whatever, um, to each his own. But yeah, that's it. That's my, that's my two cents. Take from that what you will. Always do your own research. If you have any questions, let me know. But that's it for today. Okay, goodbye, Ed. I'm out.